Hey guys, Adam here, another quick update. Uh, I went ahead and threw pole position two on the uh, dev kit there, and right away I came up with, um, or it came up with, IC25, uh, which is that security chip, I believe, that pole position two has. And so I guess what I gotta do now is I have pole position one over on the bench, and I'm gonna have to convert it over to pole position two, and then start probing the security chip and try to figure out what it's doing, and, and uh, try to put some hooks into the design to handle that. So that's next. I'll probably uh, record a little bit of that here. And also, what else? Uh, my list of things to do is i got to get all the sprites uh, ripped from pole position 1 and 2 sent over to John, who's working on the interface. Um, he's probably not going to be using all of them, I'm sure, but just to give him an idea of what kind of you know what sprites are available that he can tinker around with, come up with some ideas and brainstorm and whatever, so kind of get him going. we still got a ways to go. i got to worry about the sound and all that kind of good stuff, but we're definitely making progress. So yeah, this video will just kind of be... Um, capturing that kind of stuff and so here we go. So here we have pole position 2 running on the board set I had to convert it from pole position 1 back over to pole position 2 this is what was left of the uh, of pole position 1 so those of you have who have converted your board sets over uh, to pole position 2 know that there's a ton of ROMs you gotta replace graphics and uh, program ROMs and a bunch of uh, proms for the colors and all sorts of other good stuff and so it's quite an ordeal to convert this guy over but we have it converted and it's it's still working so awesome uh... the guy that we're going to look at today is IC25 which is the security chip some people call it IC25 because it's got a big 25 stamped on there and if you look at the main source they actually refer to it as IC25 um, and other people call it a security chip and basically it's a chip that Atari had put out um, to basically prevent people from just you know burning the ROM set and then you know converting their boards over to pole position two, and so it's actually not a ROM even though it looks like a ROM and it's located in the same grouping as the the ROMs are and in fact the Z8002 uh, reads from it like a ROM, but it's actually a multiplier inside. There's some kind of uh, multiplier function that basically takes the read address that is sent from the Z8002 multiplies it by some internal count and then uh, reads it back out again and stuff. And depending on what address that you're reading from, it can it can change that saved value internal to the multiplier. And so we want to figure that out. Um, and so what I'm going to do now is basically take the logic analyzer and we'll slap it on there and uh, see if we can crack this guy. So we have the board set hooked up to logic analyzer here. And you can see I got some nice waveforms that kind of show me what's going on. Um, the problem is, the only time I really care about looking at the data is when this pulse goes low. That's basically selecting the uh, security chip, IC25. And those are really the only time that I care about looking at the values. But, I mean, if you can see, there's like a ton of just wasted space here. And so it's kind of hard to deduce what this thing is doing when there's just, you know, that's pretty much it. That's all I can capture. There's like four occurrences right there. And I really want a ton so that I can get an idea to what the thing's really doing overall. And so there's another mode you can put this guy in. This is kind of a waveform or, or timing mode, and then you can put it into like a, a state mode, where basically it'll just it, you can indicate a trigger in this case that pulse, and it'll sample you know the address in the data bus and it'll record it, and then it'll, that's it. It'll just keep waiting until it sees another pulse, and then it'll sample those guys and record them again. It won't do anything until it sees a couple more, samples it again, and it just creates a nice little table of all these values every time that uh, those guys are selected. So let me stick this into that mode and I think we'll be able to get a ton more data uh, much quicker that way. Yeah, this is much better. So I can actually see now, this is, this is just a whole bunch of samples of uh, what that guy is doing. So over here I got the address, and over here I got the data, and this is just telling me when it's being selected and it's active low, so whenever it's low it's being selected, so that's fine. And so right away I can start seeing a pattern. Um, I can see a couple of values here, and it looks like if I were to multiply some of these together, and I can get something at least similar. I'm just kind of just ballparking. Right now I'm just eyeballing, trying to see what I might be able to guess as what this is doing. So I see a couple values here, like 90 in hex and 78 in hex, and then there's an 80. And so if I go down to my calculator here, and just real quick, 98 times, what is it? Oh, I'm sorry, 90 times 78. My result is 4380. Okay, so 90 times 78, and look right over here, it's, there's an 80 right there. And so let's kind of see if that pattern uh, continues. If I do, I don't know, down here, A2 by 1A, and so let's see, uh, A2 by 1A, and we got 1074, A2 1A, there's my 74. So there's definitely some kind of multiplication going on. 
Um, the one thing I don't understand is uh, the 10 here. That's the upper bite, and I don't see that anywhere. And so let me poke around and kind of run, you know, run some numbers here and see if I can figure out a pattern. Okay, it took some digging, but I figured out what the issue is, and any address that is lower than 256 looks like that's a signed value, and then the address over 256 is an unsigned value, and so that's why one of these bytes wasn't making sense, is because I was doing the math incorrectly. It's actually like a negative value times a positive value, and when you're doing signed arithmetic, it gets a little hairy. I'm not going to go into the details because it's bare, but... Uh, but it looks like that's all it really is, is that one of these entries, it's, it, there must be a register inside of this guy that's holding a signed value and the other guy that's holding an unsigned value, and then you can just do the math and uh, figure it all out. And so let me take that and put that into uh, the FPGA, and then we'll kick it off again and we'll see if things improve. Okay, so I have the updated design loaded up here in the FPGA. Let me take it out of reset here. And that looks promising. All right, so I think we are past that hurdle. Cool. And so I think what I'm going to do now is I'm going to start dumping some sprites. I know John wanted to start off with some known um, pole position one and two sprites to kind of get an idea of what kind of stuff he can play with, uh, at least as a starting point for the menu interface. And so let me go into MAME, and I know there's a way I can um, bring up the uh, sprite list. And so let me do that and see if we can... Um, get some of that stuff together and, and sent on over to John. Alrighty, so here we have pole position. This is the Atari version uh, loaded up in MAME. And so we can kick this guy off. Um, most of you guys probably already know this, but uh, there's a uh, there's a way to go into MAME here and actually take a look at the sprites and the palettes and all that good stuff. So if you hit F4, it'll bring you into, this is, it looks like uh, some of the graphics here. So these are look like the 8-bit characters um, can I go back at all? No. Okay. So I can probably zoom in or out though, right? Yeah, I can. So this is this is a handy little feature that allows you to kind of go into a particular game and, and you can look at all the sprites that are there and the characters and all sorts of good stuff. And so what I would like to do, actually, so this is one of three. So there probably are a few others. Okay. There's a tile map. I'm not sure we really need that. Uh, color table. And we're back to that. So what do I do? What am I doing here? Is it this button? Okay, cool. So this is the, this looks like part of the sky and maybe the background mountains. Of course the colors are off. I'm probably just looking at the wrong entry in the color palette. And here we go. So these are some 16 by 16 sprites and some 32 by 32 sprites. Wow, okay. So yeah, this is exactly the kind of stuff that I want to send to them. Um, I guess my only question is, it says color zero. So there's probably multiple entries in the color palette. And hopefully there's not too many of these. Uh, oh, you got to be kidding me. Are you serious? Wow. Uh, my plan was to take a screen capture and then uh, send them on over to him. Because you can see, you know, depending on the color palette, it really has a different look to it. And I want to make sure that I'm sending him, you know, I just want to send him zero because if you look down below where the road is, I mean, half the detail is gone. And so, you can't just I can't just send them the the um, the screen capture. I got to make sure that it's in the right palette, and I don't know which one is the correct one. Wow, this is going to be tricky. Um, is the same applies for these? Yeah, there's quite a bit of stuff going on here. Um, oh wow, that's interesting. If you look, I don't know if you can see my mouse, but if you look over here, one of these billboards says Atari, and then depending on the color, oops, let me go back. Depending on the color palette, you actually see Atari, and then you can see Namco in the background there. Yeah, look at that. It's wild. So I wonder if Atari, like, hacked up the sprites. There you go. There's a good example. There's Atari, and there's Namco. That's wild. There's other stuff going on over here, too, like Atari and Namco. Anyway, um, man, I just don't want to have to dump the every single entry. You know what I should do? Um... Let me take a look, because I actually have the, the source code for MAME. So let me poke through that a little bit. I wonder if there's just a way that I can kind of put in some hooks there to rip through this. In other words, dump this to a file, and then dump that, and then dump that. I'm sorry. Dump that, and then dump that, and that, and that, and that. And just basically go through it, you know, automate it, and go through the whole thing, and just... It's, it's going to be way more data than he'll ever need, but 
you know, if it saves me an hour or more doing all this, then it's worth it. So, okay, so it looks like I got some work to do. I'm going to start poking around in the main source and um, put some hooks in there to make this automated because I ain't doing this. This is baloney. All right, stay tuned. Okay, so um, I think I have it. I actually went in there and uh, found the code that actually displays the um, the GUI and all that kind of stuff. Actually, let me just show it to you. This stuff here. Uh, where am I? So if I go into this, the GUI that, that creates this, I was able to find the, the, the source code in MAME. And, and actually, I found the code that actually creates this as kind of like a bitmap without all this headings on the sides and, you know, this little title here. And so let's see if this works. If I, my goal, I guess, what I want this thing to do is to cycle through every single entry and then go on to the next guy and do the same thing. And so let me see if that will work. Let me back these guys up so they're all zero. And guys in color 21, move him to zero. And anybody else, 68, let's move him down to zero. Da -da 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 -da. You can see why I don't want to do this by hand. And is that it? That is it. Awesome. So if I kick this off, sweet. And you can see it's just tearing through every single entry in all of the graphics, ROMs, and all the various palettes. And done. Sweet. Okay. Uh, looking over my shoulder here. Let me bring up this. Oh, are you kidding me? Awesome. So yeah, it just basically dumped every single one to a file. And I don't have to horse around with any of this stuff. Sweet. So like I said, this is way too much data than he'll ever need. But you know, you can see that it, how much time it saved me to just do it this way. And so I can just dump this and save it over to him. Cool. So I will do that. And I'll do the same for pole position two. That'll give him everything he needs to kind of get going. And in the meantime, I'll start working on sound. And so stay tuned. We'll hopefully have some uh, some examples of the sound working and maybe not working, which will be interesting to see and go through that debug and onward and upward. So, yeah, so subscribe if you want to um, if you want to be clued in on updates and I'll just keep everybody in the loop and we'll catch you later. So here we have pole position two running. I converted the board back over to pole position pole yeah, pole position two.